the French philosopher, paleontologist, and Jesuit priest, Talhard de Chardin, wrote, we are not human beings having a spiritual experience. We are spiritual beings having a human experience. From the moment of our birth, our arrival into an external environment, we are on the wondrous and sometimes precarious journey of human life. The process of discovering what it might be to be a human being. We arrive into the world naked without possessions at a certain place and time. If we are fortunate, we receive the love and care that a vulnerable child needs to grow from human caregivers. We breathe, we hunger and thirst, we come familiar with the body that we have, we learn to move, to communicate and to express ourselves, each wonderfully different. We grow, we learn, we adapt, we make choices, build relationships, we hurt and heal. The story of our human life is written with its twists and turns, its hopes and disappointments, its fears and anxieties. Important milestones are marked and celebrated. There are defining moments, moments of crisis and moments of devastation. We experience emotions, fall in and out of love. We laugh and we cry. We experience joy and regret, loss and grief. We work and we rest. We are busy and bored. We observe the world around us and we are observed. We are alone and we are in community. We live through specific circumstances. We grow and develop, we change and we age. We are entirely unique. Nobody else has lived our life with its unique experiences, circumstances, challenges and opportunities. The season of Lent offers us the opportunity to reflect on the gift of our life and most especially our life lived now in this season of Lent in 2022. At the beginning of the season on Ash Wednesday, we are reminded that all human beings are born and all human beings die. We remember that we are dust and to dust we shall return. We also remember that we are deeply loved by a God who knows what it is like to live a human life and that we are invited individually and as a community into relationship with this God. A God who is present, a God who is with us, who is born in us. A God who wants to meet us in the reality of our existence, as we are. We are invited to seek, to recognise and to acknowledge the presence of God in our lives and to turn away from sin, from living our life without God and to return to God and to be faithful to God. Lent is a season with the opportunity for offering ourselves back to God, a time of reconnection, offering to God the very best of our time and attention, an opportunity to attend to and to nurture this relationship, to be present with ourselves, with others and with God, to listen to bring us back to our covenant relationship with God that is expressed in our loving relationships with others. All that I am, I give to you, and all that I have, I share with you. 
in our gospel reading today, we see Jesus experiencing human life with its trials and temptations, wrestling between the physical and spiritual dimension of life. From the experience of affirmation and acceptance at his baptism, you are my son, my beloved son, I am pleased with you. The spirit drives him into the most barren and dangerous of environments. A desert place of perpetual silence and lack of distraction where he is alone with his inner thoughts. A place of raging sun and sweltering heat by night, by day. A place of mirage and confusion, of thirst and hunger. A cold and dark place by night where wild animals threaten to devour. A place where his self-talk is amplified in the void and his confidence and assurance is tested and shaken in the way that it can when we wake in the middle of the night and we are all alone and there is a long time until the sun rises. In this desert place, Jesus faces three temptations, three temptations that continue to besiege the human person. Firstly, that we are defined by our actions, the things that we do rather than the people we are, a fear that we haven't done enough. If you are the Son of God, turn these stones into bread and satisfy your hunger. Jesus refuses to be defined by what he does and his ability to meet his own needs. Secondly, that we are what we other people say about us. Jesus was tempted to do something remarkable, to become popular, to have a show, proving who he was. If, if you are the Son of God, jump off this pinnacle and rely on the angels to break your fall. Jesus refused to seek popularity and good reputation. And thirdly, we are defined by what we have or possess. All this could be yours if you simply worship me. The devil that Jesus confronts seeks to persuade him that God's love for him is conditional and that it is not enough. The truth that he has received is questioned. Fake news. The focus is on him. He must prove himself. Make his own way. Be successful first. Then he can be loved. Jesus reminds the devil that God's love is unconditional. He demonstrates this later in his ministry when he touches the untouchables, heals the sick, cares for the poor, the widow, the orphan, and spend time with the sinners and outcasts. He gives to those who cannot give back. In this desert scene, there is a movement away from I am what I am, I am what I do, I am what others say about me and what I have, to how God has made me, who are what God says I am, what God has given to me. A movement from the temptations of self-definition with a focus on me to a focus on God with me. Not in my own strength, not alone. The possibility to dare to see myself in the perspective of the one who has made me and loves me and walks with me through the gift of the journey of my life. This is salvation and freedom. Even in a time of testing, Jesus demonstrates that through prayer, fasting, and scripture, he can return to that place of belonging and overcome the distractions and temptations of this life, to quieten the voices that seek to confuse and distract him, 
to listen intently for that still, small voice of God. Each one of us, with our own unique life story, is precious to God. In this church, we want to say that whoever you are, and whatever your life story, you belong here. And that your life, however great, insignificant, or inadequate you may feel it to be, your life matters. It matters to us because you matter to God. You belong to God. And the gift that is you and your life and your story is invited to be shared here. At this altar, we recognize that the whole of creation, our life and everything that we have, every breath that we take is gift. I can share myself, my story, all that I am, and all that I have been and all that I hope to be with the generous God of love who was and is and is to come. As we gather before and hopefully soon around again this altar, we bring ourselves and the gift of our lives and we say thank you. Thank you for the gift of life itself and to dare to recognize ourselves in others the precious gift of life, that we are God's beloved children, accepted, forgiven, and free. And we gather together to try, as part of a community, to live out this acceptance, forgiveness, and freedom. The Israelites, when they came to the Promised Land, were invited to the place of God's dwelling and invited to tell their story, a story of ancestors, a history of harsh treatment, of affliction, of hard labor and oppression, of being fed in the wilderness, of liberation, rescue and salvation. So now, the text says, so now the Israelites can bring the first of the fruit of the ground that God has given to them. Their response to the generous gift of God is to give back generously what they have received, to provide for others with God's provision. All things come from you and of your own do we give you. Giving is costly and it matters if something is given or taken. We are currently witnessing the harrowing and heartbreaking images of many of the people of Ukraine giving up what they have, their homes, their possessions, their families, and for some, even their lives, in the hope of restoring peace and freedom in the land that they love, that is being taken from them. The cost of safety for a wife and child is the unbearable pain and agony of a husband's separation as the train pulls out of the station, all of them knowing that they may never see one another again. The outpouring of generosity and hospitality from across the world brings hope for the millions of refugees as ordinary citizens are prepared to share what they have with others. During the bombing raids of World War II, thousands of children were orphaned and left to starve. The fortunate ones were rescued and placed in refugee camps where they received food and good care. But many of these children who had lost so much could not sleep at night. They feared waking up to find themselves once again homeless on the run and without food, alone in the wilderness. Nothing seemed to reassure them until someone hit upon the idea of giving each child a piece of bread to hold at bedtime, to smell it and feel its texture. 
holding their bread, these children could finally sleep in peace. All through the night, the bread reminded them, today I ate and I will eat again tomorrow. Many of these children survived the concentration camps only because other prisoners had given their own last piece of bread away to save the children. Victor Frankl wrote of how this bread brought not just survival, but also hope and interior freedom. We who lived in concentration camps can remember the men who walked through the huts comforting others, giving away their last piece of bread. They may have been few in number, but they offer sufficient proof that everything can be taken from a person but one thing, the last of his or her freedoms, to choose one's attitude in any set of circumstances, to choose one's own way. Today we will receive bread, bread for our life journey, not stones turned into bread, but bread freely given, the broken body of Christ, the bread of life, shared with plenty for all. Christ invites us to receive with empty hands so that we can be filled and that we might share what we have received with others, that we may share bread with those who have no bread to break, with all those who thirst and hunger. As we consider together over the coming weeks of Lent how we can be St. James's, may we take time to recognize how each person is precious to God that we ourselves are precious in God's sight. May we be grateful for all that we have generously been given. May we eat and be satisfied. And may we consider each what God is calling us to give as we seek to build God's kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven. May we know God's affirming presence in any wilderness that we know. And may we hold on to the bread of life, our daily bread, who promises to be with us, to nourish us and feed us. Today we ate, and tomorrow we will eat again, in this world and the next. Amen.